The Enter Credit Card Charges function can be found under the Banking drop-down menu or one of the icons representing this function. Once selected, this is the window that appears and graphically looks like you are entering a check or bill. In effect, by using the Enter Credit Card Charges function, you will be entering in all the credit card detail that will be represented in the credit card statement you receive each month from your credit card company. After you have entered all of the credit card charges for a given period, you will then need to reconcile your credit card entries to your credit card statement, a similar process to reconciling your bank account. We will discuss how to do this after we go through the various steps to enter a credit card charge. As we begin the process of entering a credit card charge, notice on the top of the screen there is a taskbar allowing you to perform various tasks such as going back or forward to previous credit card charges or refund slash credit entered, creating a new transaction as well as saving, deleting, copying, memorizing, printing, or attaching a file to the transaction you are in. And there are also other functions that are available that we... However, before you enter your credit card purchase or charge or refund or credit, notice you can make a choice here. You will want to make sure you select the appropriate credit card account, which needs to be set up in the chart of accounts before you use this function. See how to set up an account in Lesson 4 if you need a refresher. Once you've selected the credit card account you want to use and whether your entry is going to represent a purchase or charge or refund or credit, then you can enter the vendor, customer, employee, or other name in the purchased from field along with entering the date, reference number, amount, and memo if desired. The bottom portion of the Enter Credit Card Charges window allows you to record the expenditure under either or both Expenses tab or the Items tab. The difference between these tabs is that the Expenses tab allows you to select the account or accounts from the Chart of Accounts list you want to utilize in recording your check expenditure. And the Items tab allows you to select from the item list the item or items the check expenditure relates to. In some cases, the check expenditure may require using both tabs to properly record the transaction. Notice the different columns of information available in each of the tabs and how they are different. In the Expenses tab, you select the account and can put in a memo. But in the Items tab, once you select an item, then the description, quantity, unit of measure, cost, and amount is automatically populated depending on how the item was set up. Also, the accounting is determined based on which account was selected when the item was set up. Item creation, including settings, is covered in Lesson 4. Similarities between the two tabs include the ability to associate the check expenditure with a customer job, as well as determining whether you want to make the expenditure billable to the customer or job referenced. Lastly, you can select a class to associate the expenditure with. Keep in mind that QuickBooks allows you to split your check expenditures into as many line items that are needed in the tabs provided to properly record the transaction. Now, on the Enter Credit Card Charges window taskbar on the top, you can select Open PO that the check expenditure relates to. If you want to clear any splits created in the transaction, you can select this as well. And lastly, if you make changes to the amounts in the Expenses and or Items tab, you can select the Recalculate button. Once all of the credit charges have been entered to the best of your knowledge for a given month, then the process to reconcile your entries to your credit card statements is as follows. First, under the Banking drop-down window, select the Reconcile function. Since we are in the Enter Credit Card Charges window, our choice will say, reconcile credit cards. Once selected, the Begin Reconciliation window will open and allow you to select the credit card account you want to reconcile, and then you can put in a date and ending balance per the credit card statement you are reconciling to. If you want to put in any finance charges that appear on your credit card statement, you can do so in the lower part of the window by putting in the amount, date, and account you want the charges to go to. 
You can also assign a class to this transaction if you would like to do so. Once the appropriate information has been entered for this window, click on Continue, which will open up the Reconcile Credit Card window. This window will reflect on the left side all of the charges that have been entered and not yet reconciled, and on the right side will show all of the payments and credits that have been entered and not yet reconciled. In order to reconcile these items, you simply check mark all items that have cleared the credit card statement you have received by left clicking your mouse in the left check mark column next to each transaction that is open. As you check mark the items that have been cleared, notice in the bottom left hand portion of the window that the cleared balance and difference calculation changes. The reason for this is that the cleared balance represents what the cleared bank balance should be according to QuickBooks and the difference represents the cleared balance minus the ending balance per the credit card statement that you entered in the previous window. Until you are done check marking all the cleared items there should be a difference but once you are done matching all your cleared items with what cleared the credit card statement then there should be no difference and if this is the case then you are reconciled to the penny as the saying goes. Since you have in front of you what you entered into QuickBooks represented by the check marked items and you also have in front of you the credit card statement then if there still exists a difference you need to go through the process again and see where your difference lies. Either you miss some items on the credit card statement that are not entered into QuickBooks or vice versa but in either case the answer will always be available in front of you since you have both sources of information that you are comparing. So you should always be able to reconcile. Some tools to help you reconcile include being able to hide transactions after the statement's end date, which cuts down on the unnecessary detail being shown. You can also mark all or unmark all transactions on your screen to expedite your reconciliation process. If you made a mistake in entering information in the previous window, you can always select the Modify button in the lower right of your window, and on the bottom left, you can see what your total deposits and other credits, as well as your total check and payments that you have checkmark add up to. These totals can then be compared to the statement totals that in almost all statements are provided. When your difference is zero, then you can click on the Reconcile Now button and you will first get the options of either recording that you are going to write a check for payment of the credit card balance due or enter a bill to record the accounts payable to the credit card company that will be paid at a later date for the balance that is due. The reason this step is necessary is that when you accumulated the credit card charges in the Enter Credit charge function, the charges were recorded against a credit card account in the chart of accounts and therefore if you are going to record that the balance due is going to be paid or some portion of it, you would enter and record the payment as a reduction to the credit card liability account. Likewise, if you want to pay the credit card balance due at a later date, then you need to enter a bill which updates accounts payable and then the credit card liability account is relieved since you are in effect moving one current liability to another. That is, you're moving the credit card liability amount due from the credit card liability account to accounts payable so that it can be paid through the pay bills function, which is linked to accounts payable only. We review the enter bills pay bills process in lesson eight if you need to better understand how this works. Whichever way you select, whether writing a check or entering a bill, the next window that comes up allows you to print out a summary, detailed, or both reconciliation report that will provide you with the reconciliation information you just completed. Or you can simply close this window and complete recording either your check or enter bill choice. Notice the account in the Expenses tab will be the credit card liability account that is going to be reduced by either paying it off through write checks or having it flipped to an accounts payable if it's an enter bill transaction being recorded.